Hey guys, CB Super. Um, came up with another tool. It's called the Heat Wave tool. I'll go ahead and show it to you real quick. What it is is it just it's just a quick way to uh, create heat distortion. So here I have this clip of a bunch of fire going off and uh, just this little logo here. Uh, it's not been applied yet, so it's pretty simple. And all this is, is I've just taken a background, thrown some text on there, and then I've added some fire elements and some embers and some smoke. Uh, the one thing it's missing is any kind of distortion that you would see from the, um, you know, from the air getting heated up, you know, giving it kind of a wavy, you know, mirage look. So I went ahead and made a tool. It's called the CB Heat Wave. And as you can see, when you click on it, it has, uh, it's only got a couple of settings here. And I'll go over how to use it real quick. By default, it's pretty much set the way that I like to use it, which is, you know, what most of these tools are. They're really just for me. But I thought you guys might be able to get some use out of this. If you're doing anything that you know would have any kind of realistic fire look, you're probably going to need some kind of uh, heat distortion. And of course, what this is is it's uh, it's got some fast noise in there. It's uh, it's got a displace node. It's got a couple of masks and uh, well, I guess if we just hover over, we can kind of show you. It's got a fast noise. Got a couple transforms. It's got a little bit map in there, and it's uh, displacing. Uh, the cool thing about this though is that. I left it with a with a mask input. Now it's it's CB wave input, but what it is is it's made for masks. So as it is right now, you're gonna get all of the heat distortion all over the entire frame. That's usually not what we want unless your fire is you know covering the entire frame. Generally, you're gonna want to add some kind of a mask, and it doesn't have to be anything uh, super precise. It could be something like this where it's just a um, an ellipse. And then in the ellipse, I'm probably going to want to, uh, you know, drive the soft edge, you know, up, up all the way, maybe even a little bit further. Uh, so that's probably good. Back in here, uh, now all you have to do is plug whatever ellipse. You can also use a spline. Uh, you can already see this is without the ellipse added. You can see it's adding some good amount of distortion all over. Once you plug in the mask, it's only going to mask where you want the heat distortion to to actually be. And now we'll just go ahead and let it cache, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, without messing with any of the settings, um, as you can see, uh, it's a pretty cool looking uh, distortion. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ping pong it because I want to see it a couple times. So as you can see, there's there's quite a bit of like blurring that's going on here. Uh, it's obviously blur, but it's also moving. Uh, it's moving whatever direction you want it to move. Now, it, it obviously helps to have a lot of other elements, but I mean, that's compositing. You're layering elements on top of each other to get the effect. There's some smoke in here, embers flying about. Uh, you've got, you know, a few different fire elements down here, you know, and it's really selling the, you know, the, the need for all that heat and distortion that's taking place. Uh, let's kind of take a look real quickly at some of the settings that we can play around with. Um, so there's a heat intensity, and what that's going to do is, as you up that, it's going to uh, it's going to affect the actual waviness of this. And of course, I mean, you can go kind of crazy on this, and it'll get really annoying really fast. There's a heat speed. What this is is this actually controls the the how fast the heat is going to be moving in whichever direction you choose. Um, and you can change the direction by using the flow angle. By um, by default, it's actually set to straight up. Um, there's some distortion blur. That's that blur you see naturally. Uh, if if you don't like that blur, um, you can you know completely turn it off just by uh, you know dropping it down to zero. You're not going to get the distorting blur, but you're still going to have all of the heat, um, the heat waviness. Uh, and then of course, if um, if you want to scale up or down the actual size of the blur, you can. Uh, you can drop the scale down. Uh, it's a little um, counterintuitive though because uh, this is actually a fast noise scale. So by rising it up, the scale, uh, the noise scale is going to get um, larger, but by getting larger, the actual individual uh, blobs are going to get a little bit smaller. And so now if we jump over here, we can kind of see what that's going to look like. So by you know making the scale larger, you're actually decreasing the size of the individual blobs or the individual blurring uh, distortion. So just keep that in mind. It's you know not super intuitive the way that it works. Uh, it's think of it as like a fast noise because there's actually a fast noise that's driving a mask for blurring. 
or an alpha mat for the blurs. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's the heat wave tool. Um, I'm sure you guys will get a lot of use out of this. Just remember uh, the key is to use it in conjunction with, you know, some kind of fire or flame element or anything that would create a lot of heat. Uh, feel free to play around with these settings. Hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you guys are able to use this tool. If you have any questions on how to load this into the macro, in the description below there'll be uh, some easy instructions on uh, where to upload this into your uh, macros folder on your computer. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.